Okay, so it is 708, and I'd like to call the meeting of the Dartmouth Planning Board, April 22nd, 2024, to order. And I will do that with a roll call vote. Margaret Sweet? Yeah. Lori Miller? Yes. Let the record show Nick Cyclopatis is absent. And at this time, Kevin Estes is absent. Kevin Mello, present. Uh, so, Christine, if you'd... So, we're going to remind everybody that this meeting is being recorded um, and that Lori is Lori Ann Miller is serving as the alternate and she has been brought up to speed on the um, items that were being continued and she will be signing the paper tomorrow. Very good. Okay. Um, so we will do administrative item number one, site plan review for 286 State Road, continued from 325-24. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, my name is Attorney Christopher Alfin from Blattman, Bobrowski, Haverty, and Silverstein. My law office is in Concord. Uh, with me tonight is Scott, who is uh, the operator of the project, Maureen, who is uh, our traffic expert, and Joey is here as our civil engineer. Um, the last hearing, we had some comments, um, some concerns. And since the last hearing, we've been working on updating the plans, making some revisions. And tonight, we'd like to go over those revisions. We think the revisions address um, all the board's concerns and questions. So with that, I'll turn it over to Joey, and he'll go over, go over the revisions. Sure, good evening, everyone. Um, Christine, is it possible to share um... My screen for tonight. It says that it's not. Oh, now now I can. Oh, it sh it should be yes. They'll give go. you permission now. You're all okay. set. All right. See so. Can everyone see? Can everyone see my screen now. It looks like you can. Mm -hmm. okay, yes. Great. Um, all right. So good evening, everyone. Joey Fonseca with Bowler. Um, wanted to just kind of. I didn't want to spend too much time just kind of running through the comments from our last hearing, but wanted to kind of just run through some of the high level um, uh, plan revisions that we've done here. Uh, I know that we uploaded a comment or full comment response letter for all the comments that we had received to date. Um, and there was th there was a few that were sort of high level that, you know, I think deserve more conversation tonight. Um, and, you know, that's around stormwater, bus parking, landscaping, um, and building facade. So I'm just going to run through a few of these. Um, and then I know that there were some comments that were posted today, as well as Friday, and we can run through a few of those as well. I don't think um, a lot of more pretty quick um, discussion points. Um, so I'll just, uh, I'll start off um, today with just regarding the stormwater improvements. Um, we did, uh, since the last hearing, uh, we had a conversation with, uh, with Paul Duarte, um, just regarding overall approach here for the stormwater uh, portion of the site, um, as you recall from the previous uh, from the previous hearing, uh, we were reducing impervious coverage by quite a bit. However, um, phosphorus removal was was a a portion of the site or a portion of the drainage improvement that we hadn't addressed. Uh, and we've been speaking with Paul on ways that we could do that um, to also address the comment on. Um, uh, improving the landscaping around the drive-through area. Um, so what we've done, uh, and I'm just going to go over to the revised um, landscape rendering. So we've provided these tree boxes, which are essentially like small contained bioretention basins. Uh, they're planted. They have soil media within them. Um, they allow for stormwater to be filtered, and they also allow for a phosphorus removal component to that. And the requirement here for this overall site uh, is 50% of the impervious coverage. So we were able to, to provide that. And there are some comments that um, that we've received from DPW on this, um, but we were, were able to provide 50% reduction with the addition of, I believe, six total tree boxes. Um, and essentially they're, they're in close connection to the, to the proposed uh, catch basins that were located within the, the parking area where before the catch bases were just interconnected. They tie into a, man, a drain manhole and then the stormwater would, would flow off site as it does today. Um, here, these tree boxes are sort of in line. So the, so the catch bases will capture stormwater, treat it for oil gas separation. It'll, it'll then um, leach into these bioretention tree boxes. 
any overflow from those components then go off site, but prior to stormwater leaving the site does get the benefit of uh, stormwater improvements, phosphorus removal, et cetera. So we have a few of those tree boxes located within the parking area, as well as along the outside edge of the drive through uh, as well. So again, you know, a cer certainly an improvement over the existing condition today and also um, allows for some additional planting uh, to go along the drive through um, which was a point that was a comment that was made at the last hearing as well. So, um, so along with the additional landscaping located within the parking area, we've also uh, upgraded the, the landscaping along the bottom edge of the drive through as well. This is the, I'm going to switch to the prior rendering um, just for comparison purposes. So we were leaving this area south of the drive through as, you know, lawn area, which is how it exists today. There is some large vegetation uh, along the perimeter, but for the most part, it was we were just kind of leaving that existing condition there. Um, but we did, you know, receive a comment from planning staff or, or staff to look at ways to to increase that, uh, and that's what we've done here. Added some additional trees uh, and some additional shrubs uh, along there to again just to kind of enhance that um, that landscaping approach. Um, Bus parking was another topic uh, that was discussed uh, quite a bit at the last hearing. Um, since that hearing, we had been um, discussing with the landlord because having a bus, uh, assigning a bus parking within our lot created some some issues with, with just circulation within the parcel and then pedestrian access to the front door. Um, we looked at offsite, potential offsite um, locations, um, which was, you know, within this parking area here, and then and then having a pedestrian connection over to our site and and then to our front door. Um, what we ended up looking at after that was this one way drive. This plan cuts off, but this one way drive through lane um, as it approaches the site is thirty feet wide. It's a one way lane. It's thirty feet wide, and our as we were looking at different options for bus parking, we thought you know this is a one way section of the street where you're entering. The plaza, um, and you know, heading towards Chick Fil A or you're heading towards the mall. If we could still maintain an 18 foot drive aisle, but also provide a bus parking location here via just pavement striping, you know, we'll have a, a bus parking signage there. We'd also um, include a, a stop bar and a stop sign here, um, so the cars aren't just um, passing through this intersection without uh, without safely passing through and not stopping. And you know, there's other turning movements going on with this with this entrance here, but. It allowed for a bus to be able to pull in from this uh, from this existing uh, what I call slip drive uh, coming into to the Dartmouth Ball Park, and then it would give um, the passengers you know an, an accessible route to the front door. So there'd be a, a walk here across the the drive through and then towards the front door. Uh, and the grades here you know are fairly flat from this section of the site to the building, so it was it was definitely a a location that that worked from an ADA perspective. Um, and then along with that, we also looked at providing an ADA accessible path from the sidewalk uh, along GAR, you know, to the site as well. So if anyone's on the sidewalk, it gives them an opportunity to also uh, enter the site and get to our, our front door. So that was our, our option for the bus parking um, um, that, you know, again, limited, you know, how much it was going to interfere with the internal circulation of the parking area um, and still provided a, a pretty quick and, and, and easy access to the front door uh, for Chick-fil-A. Um, let's see, building facade was another comment um, that was received um, and we passed along the comments to our architect. Um, and I'm gonna pull up an exhibit that compares the two um, so that we can discuss um, what was submitted and, and, and the revised submitting uh, submittal afterwards. So up on the top of your screen here is what was submitted for the original application. Uh, this is just your proto um, Chick-fil-A, you know, facade with, with the brick and the, and the two tones there. Um, after the architects had reviewed the requirements um, that, the, that you all had passed along, um, what they did was they created a stone uh, water table here, so a, a different material change um, along, the, along the water table, along the bottom portion of the building. Um, that's, again, different than what was uh, under the prior uh, proto um, development plan. Uh, and they also bumped the roof heights up and added, you know, and added some trim there to just kind of break up those elements 
Um, whereas before you kind of had a, a, a similar elevation for the roof line. This kind of breaks up the building facade and gives it some height um, on some of these bump out locations. Again, kind of, you know, towards a the theme of what was of what the architects were reviewing um, with the architectural um, guidelines that were that were passed along to us. Um, so some slight improvements, but certainly um, keeping um, in keeping with some of the other developments that we've seen in town uh, recently um, as well. Um, there was comment, there were comments on the cross access and parking agreements. Uh, we passed along um, the language that was included in the lease there. So if there are any comments, certainly at the end of our presentation here, we'll, you know, we're, we'll, we'll be able to address those. Um, so you all have had a chance to review that. Um, and lastly, before I get into the new comments, um, the uh, comment on, the, on if we need a waiver for the bypass lane um, was also uh, a comment that we received recently. And it was also a comment um, that we heard at the end of our uh, presentation. Um, last week. So the plan, um, I'm going to go here because it identifies it better. Um, so just wanted to just briefly just discuss how the drive through operation works here. Um, on off-peak times, um, th this location is going to have three entrance, three entrances into the drive through two order, uh, three ordering lanes, and they merge into two lanes and you exit um, into, into, the inter into the parking area. Um, under off-peak times, um, the operator has a flexibility to operate just one lane or depending on, you know, the morning, if, if, if this location is a little bit popular for more popular for breakfast, they may have two lanes for ordering, but it would likely merge to a single lane. You'd pick up at the pickup window and then the customer would exit. That would leave this, this, this outside lane to be open. Uh, it would act as a bypass lane. Um, under peak times, you know, your lunch, your dinner, and typically through the afternoon, I'm sure if you all haven't visited a Chick-fil-A recently, um, they do have team members out within the drive area in the drive through lanes um, during their peak times, taking orders, taking payments, delivering food. Um, you know, there could be up to, uh, you know, 10 team members uh, within that drive through lane or, or more, depending on, um, you know, the operator and their preference here. Uh, but they will be out here. They'll be taking orders, like I said, payment and delivering food in the event of, an emergency if this drive through lane is, you know, is packed and it's during, you know, a peak time, the team members are trained to move vehicles out of the drive through lane, park within the interior parking lot. They would deliver their food within the parking area. Um, and that would allow, if there's a, a vehicle that's, you know, needs to exit for an emergency or, or you know, if, if someone needs to, um, uh, if someone needs to go to this this vehicle that's that's having an emergency, it allows those those vehicles to exit the drive through with the team members there. So even though both lanes may be um, may have cars queued up within them, the team members there would be directing that traffic out of the drive through lane. So it wouldn't be like you've got a condition where you've got someone with a medical emergency and now they're gridlocked in there because there's no way they can they can exit. There'll always be a team member there. There'll always be an opportunity for these cars to move out um, and that car either be addressed or you know be able to leave that drive through lane. Um, so I'm not sure if that still requires a, a waiver. We can certainly add that to our cover sheet if that's a waiver that's that needs to be requested. I just wanted to explain the drive through operations and how how it operates and how a lot of times that 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 bypass lane is is sort of built into this to this program um, already. Um, and I, Joey, I'm, let me add one other thing. Sure. On that third lane uh, there at the order point, there, there's no menu board out there. There's only two menu boards. Um, so in, in the event that we ever use that third lane, it would be with um, with team members out there taking orders um, uh, or or it could be like a um, a queuing thing where where a mobile order could be placed, but it's it's not the full menu board, um, and so the intent is for that lane to be open um, unless we have team members out there. So, so how, in the how event, people, some sorry, somebody, if, how do people um, know if that that there's not a menu board in that lane? Mm -hmm. It would be close. It would right. there would be something closing it off at the uh, at the drive through entrance, so they would know to only go in the the interior two lanes. So okay. most times that's going to be closed off. Correct. Okay. So if somebody is in lane two and they decide this is taking too long, they can just 
cross over to lane three, drive and get right out. Correct. They're not the, trapped in. No. If they say this is taking too long, forget it. Let's get out of here. Correct. They, they can jump the lane and get right out safely. Yeah, and it's not really jumping anything. That uh, that right. Uh, that's no, all stripes. Yeah, it's just striping. Yeah. That's right. right. Well, that that's the purpose. So, in what I'm hearing, lane three really is your bypass lane, in, in my eyes. Chairman, I have a question. Yes. How effective is that third lane as a bypass in your other facilities? Because my understanding is that this is a very popular place and very busy. And the whole idea of that bypass was to get people who didn't want to stay in line for some reason, they forgot their wallet or whatever, uh, for an emergency. So how often do you feel you're going to use that third lane? So what I would tell you is that um, <clears throat> from a from an order taking perspective, we won't we won't take orders out there in that third lane unless we have people out there. And if somebody wants to get through, we'll accommodate that. Um, one of our most important tenants is to to serve the customer. And if somebody's trying to get out, we'll we'll accommodate that and let them out. <clears throat> I think, um, you know, I think probably the bigger concern would be that if there's an emergency, um, and and we always. Uh, are cognizant of that too. Um, we very, I mean, very limited uh, times if we ever had an issue where we couldn't get to somebody. In fact, I don't know of any. So I, okay. I don't want to say it's never happened because we've got 3,000 restaurants across the country. Um, there might be something that I don't know of, but it hasn't been something that's come up. Thank you. So those were some of the major comments or the, the, the larger comments that we received on our first hearing. Um, there were a few other additional comments that we received uh, recently. Um, one of them was just regarding a menu board sign uh, or size waiver. And my question on that is if that's handled with the sign variance or does that get handled through this board as well? Is that part of the approval process? Um, my understanding of it, it was a separate permit for the for the signage. Yes, I would say that the um, for the increased size size um, sign size that you're looking at, you would go to the ZBA, and that would be a separate application. But we just want to make sure that it is documented on the plans. Okay. Um, I did not see um, DPW's comments earlier today. Um, I just saw them now, just now mm -hmm. when you had mentioned it. Um, so I know that they'll pro there'd probably be some revisions as a result of those comments that were received. Um, uh, I think the, the biggest concern that I had was with the bypass lane mm -hmm. um, for, the, for the planning board's sake. Um, I think that um, there should be a note added to the plan based on the conversation that we had, maybe saying something about that there would not be a message board, you know, because all what I don't want to see happen after the fact, if the planning board is okay with as you've proposed it, is that to see two weeks after that there's a message board up on there. So I would like, you know, something, something kind of just stating what you're stating on the plan somewhere, a note of some sort. Um, so that you would you would come back if you're going to revise something like that and put a message board in place. Right. It could, it could be a condition that says no message board in the third lane as part of the decision. That that makes sense. Yeah, well, I, I would want to see it for future for future things right on the plan. I would like the note on the right plan on too. The plan. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And Chairman, can I ask another question, please? Sorry, I was muted. Yes. Um, I have. Could we go back to the um, the tree plan where you show your trees? Okay, I've always had a problem with the islands, with the trees that are at the end of the islands. They grow big and then people can't see. They have to sort of like inch out to go past them because of other traffic. Are those low growing um, tree uh, at the end of each island? Are they low growing so that people can see? Yeah, so at the end of these islands, in, in yes. turn, these are all shrubs at the at the end. Um, let me go to the landscape plan. Typically, these are more vertical 
um, trees. Um, Unfortunately, we're told that about a lot of plants. And if you drive yeah. through town, you get to the end of the islands and you, you, you have to creep out because you can't see. So these are gene beads. So GBs are ginkgo biloba, turmeric, caliper. Um, the only large, larger canopy trees I could see are these red maples. Um, actually, although, right. although these are the October glories, um, I we can certainly we could certainly provide uh, some additional information on on the landscaping here or. Typically on these on these Chick Fil A landscape plans, these are more of what what we call uh, columnar trees, which are more vertical. So the canopies are you know they're more vertical than they are wide, and that's just due to uh, you know uh, obviously not closing off views towards towards the building. We're, you know we want the customers to see the building and not be screened right. by landscaping. Yeah, so those don't those don't what, bother me. The only yeah. ones I'm concerned about are the ones at the end of the islands. So I have verified on the on the landscape plan, um, according to the schedule here, that they are a um, a shrub. Um, oh, these ends are, are all shrubs. Called, are, win are okay. called winter. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, winterberry. That sounds right. Yes, winterberry. Okay, thank you. Um. Uh, along with some other notes on hours of operation, I think we we went through it on the first hearing, but the it is uh, Monday through Saturday, 6.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. and close on Sunday. Um, and there's some other language in there regarding max curve cut dimensions, which we could certainly add to the plan as well. I mean, there are minor, uh, minor comments that, that we had saw that we could certainly update um, the plans there um, with that. I think really that's, that's really it from plan revisions uh, from our first hearing that was um, that we had submitted. Uh, I know that the traffic was presented at our last hearing um, and Maureen with, with Bowman is also on this call today uh, again. So I'm not sure if there are any additional comments um, regarding the traffic that um, that she would need to address, but um, just wanted to just, um, you know, certainly ask a question. I'm not sure if uh, there were a few comments made in the last one, uh, but I think they were addressed during the hearing. So just wanted to, to make sure that the or knew that we're, we have the whole team here. Um, so certainly if there are any additional questions, um, we're all here to uh, to answer those. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a question? Yes. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the bus issue. Um, I'm not so crazy about the bus parking there because when you're coming off the highway and you're coming off Route 6 and you park a bus there, you know, some people drive a little faster than they should to come off exits. I'm not sure that's the best place to park a bus. Um, I'm almost thinking uh, it might even be better with the uh, parking across the way that the mall has allowed you to use. So we had we had approached the uh, the landlord with this location. Unfortunately, they have future plans for this area, um, oh, so, so, they, so they they we weren't allowed to use this area um, for that bus parking. Um, but uh, we do, Maureen is here with Bowman. I know that we had briefly looked at it prior uh, to tonight. And, and Maureen, I'm not sure if, if there's any other comments regarding that, just, just regarding pulling into that drive lane as far as visibility goes. It is it is a ways after you, you turn right into the site. I do understand the comment. Um, the bus parking would be along the right side, not the left side. So if you're pulling in, it would be an easier swing as you enter. Um, enter the site, but I'm not sure. Maureen, well, the bus is going to park along on the right hand side of the road, right? Correct. The, the bus would be parked sort of under where this tree is today, right? Um, and here's your your access road down here. Yeah, I'm just yeah. not. Oops, sorry, you can keep but I'm just not that comfortable with that. I don't know how my other board members. Uh, I just think that you know that might be an issue. I think there could be potentially some additional striping that we could show beyond what um, is shown on these plans, like towards the intersection with the access road coming from Route 6, just to have, help people navigate around that bus um, parking space and not use it. Yeah, exactly. Um, just so that they're kind of not turning into 
a spot um, that goes right into the bus parking area. Um, but from an, an operational standpoint, I think we thought this was a, a logical spot for it, just for buses coming in from Route 6. Um, and then well, the my stop only bar question would help is, with the... My only question is, you know, you get repeat customers. And if the buses aren't parked there, then they're going to go through that. They're not going to go around, I would think. So I'm just a little concerned about, because it is kind of close uh, to Route 6. How many feet is that from Route 6? The bus spot itself? Yes. Um, I don't know what you showed on here, Joey. I know. It's probably a little over 150. It's a decent length on here, or maybe close to 100. Yeah, it's about 100. Yep. And, I, and again, that's not roots. It's the access road the access. Route 6. Right. It's not Route right. 6 itself. Right. Yeah. The yeah, it's about 100 feet to the, to the back of that space. And that's the only only place that you can put it, huh? You know, I'll, I'll add, um, the, first of all, the, the mall developer has been good to work with so far, but they just don't want to, um, uh, you know, encumber their property with with the uh, with any bus parking. But if uh, Joe, if you go back to the aerial um, that kind of shows the mall and everything too, the the one further out, um, one of the things that I was noticing, and I noticed this at many malls that I go to is you, you can see a couple of buses that are parked. Um, mm -hmm. And it, that's pretty normal um, that these buses will park wherever they can, uh, it, especially in mall areas. Um, and then the the folks that jump off, um, like if, if that bus that's parked diagonal uh, had a whole bunch of kids get off uh, or, you know, athletes or whatever it might be, some of them might be coming to Chick Fil A, but a lot of them would be going into the mall. Um, I would, I don't, I don't want to be, you know, I'd love to get all their business, but there, there's got to be somebody that wants a slushy and a pretzel uh, on there versus, you know, a Chick Fil A sandwich. Um, and you know, the mall is a great environment where people can go to multiple places. But um, I think the the solution for a bus that would just want to go to the Chick Fil A um that that area right there on that access road we felt was was accommodating um and you know we, we want as many customers as we can get but um we felt like that was a pretty good solution knowing that even though the mall's not going to want to encumber their property for bus parking those buses are going to park wherever they can find spaces in that mall parking lot so you never get buses, you actually would never get a bus right inside a Chick-fil-A? Not very often. Usually they park uh, either on an access road where it's not designated, um, an adjacent lot, because usually there's not, not uh, you know, the, the parking lots just aren't big enough to accommodate. And I know, I know it does look like we have a lot of parking there, but we feel like we need those parking for, for customer and team members. Um, this is a, this is a, um, a market where we feel like a lot of our team members will drive. Um, and so we always want to make sure that we have enough parking for the team members, uh, for the delivery drivers, and then also for obviously for the dining customers. I do think, um, based on Margaret's concerns, that the um, additional striping all the way closer to the service road is something that should be um, considered. I can also tell the planning board members, um, per your previous chair's request, um, the peer review was done by the regional planning office, um, and they concurred with uh, some of the things that technical reviewers and that the planning board was, uh, were thinking with regard to some of the traffic concerns. Um, I think um, the uh, engineer has done a wonderful job um, and the company has done a wonderful job trying to address all of the concerns that we have. Um, I think 
like I said, I would like some additional notes on the plans for future generations with regard to the bypass lane, because that was a big concern for me, not so much with regard to somebody having a medical emergency in the in the lanes, but somebody needing to get out for an emergency. You know, something happens with a child or something like that. I need to know that people can get out of there and they're not stuck in that. And I don't want to put that, the onus of getting people out of that line on you know, your, your team members, your, you know, your, your young adults or your high school students that are working in that out in the, the lanes there. So I'm, I'm glad to see some of those things. I will, um, uh, you know, want to see the cones or something up there, like I said, on the, unless you're using it for some very special reason, but for the most part, the, the lane should be, should be, um, kind of closed at the beginning there and then people could move across if they needed to. Um, one of the other things, I know that the fire chief had had some concerns with regard to getting his vehicles around. We did reach out to him because in the past he has wanted um, fire lane striping and painting, things like that. Um, he did not ask for that on this plan, but he you, you did provide the um, the turning radius is the turning the turning thing. So we're going to make sure with him, you might receive one or two more comments from him. Um, as you said, you received the uh, DPW comments today and you received um, plannings on Friday. You know, we typically um, give two weeks for reviews. That's why the planning board meetings are two weeks apart. So, and we didn't get the plans until, so it had been just about a week. So um, um, I'm recommending when the planning board is done asking all of their comments and uh, or asking all of their questions and, you know, comments are given that uh, maybe we consider handling this administratively, but it'll be up to this board. Um, again, I think you addressed many of the things. One of the only things that I was um, still had questions about was with regard to delivery and um, and uh, trash pickup and those things. I know you said those would be off peak hours. Um, I don't I don't see that addressed in the um, the response to comment letter that I received. I don't know if I just missed it. Um, so if you want to speak to that a little bit, that would also be helpful. Sure. Yeah. Um, so deliveries and, and as you mentioned, deliveries and trash pickup are are both done off hours large i would say large the larger deliveries with like the 62 uh, w62 and 67 trucks will certainly be done off hours because they'll need some of that parking in order to maneuver and get you know off site so they wouldn't be able to maneuver the site if there are if there were some cars parked there there are some smaller box truck deliveries that occur for you know bread etc that you know will occur during um uh, during store opening however those are smaller trucks uh, and easier uh, for them to to maneuver through the site and exit, um, the for for trash um, uh, pickup again, it's it's off hours. Uh, you know the trash closure is located uh, near the drive through entrance. Uh, we suspect the uh, the truck will will sort of make a um, clockwise maneuver through, head straight in, pick up, uh, and then exit either uh, towards a mall or or exit out towards. Uh, Fountain Corner Mall Road. So when you um, when you're saying off hours, then it's when the when the the building is actually closed. Or correct. Not, correct. It's not open. Okay. Correct. Because there's off hours, then there's off peak hours. So. Okay. All right. Off. Oh, yeah. Unless there's a, you know, and I think you know yeah. there there maybe there are situations where you know it's during uh, while the store is open that they need you know to to remove, but I think that's pretty rare. It's usually done all off hours. Okay. The, and the other, I, I think we touched on this during our first hearing, but the mountable curve extension island um, uh, along the, near the Fountain Corner Mall Road entrance has also been added to the plan. I know the details have been added, um, but just wanted to also point that out as well. It was shown on the plans and, you know, that's a four inch high mountable curve. And I know we did receive a comment from fire uh, regarding that. Just wanted to make sure that that curving is, is mountable as well as anything, any other striped areas within the parking lot. Um, this is the only section that is mountable. Everything else is just pavement striping at grade. So there's nothing that would impede a, a fire truck from entering um, and exiting if he has to travel over these striped areas. And we had responded back to the um, right. the fire department comment via the portal as well. And then planning did put in the comments the other day for the the um, landscape area that's very much overgrown on Fonts Corner Mall Road um, that you'll be working with the uh, tree warden and you have 
So we just want to see kind of what you're going to leave. So we have a general idea that it's not going to be completely, you know, clear cut as there are pretty specific rules with regard to landscaping all along Fonts Corner Mall Road. Fonts Corner Road. Correct. And I believe we've added, yeah, we've added a note to the plan that is. Um, to, to coordinate. Um, with that with the tree warden. Yep, the GBW director. Hey, I, don't, I don't know if you would, uh, if, if that note says it, Joey, but if it makes makes them feel better we could comment that uh that they need to have a um a meeting prior to the pruning in, in that area we've done that before that that might be very very helpful i mean again you know we're going to let you clean it all up it is it, it you know it's just very steep i know that there's mm -hmm. i just don't want to see everything gone that's all mm -hmm. um, so yeah our meeting would be fabulous actually with the, I guess we the tree warden. Tree warden. I don't so know. the tree warden and myself. So okay. that you know you can make the decisions with the tree warden, and just so I know, so that when the phone calls come in, that all the trees are coming down and the world is coming to an end, I can say, <laughs> well, no, that's not true. You know, they've looked at these plans and they picked these trees and whatever. So we more for informational purposes, or at least to make sure, if you have the meeting with the tree warden and then I I get the plan that's mocked up, then that's fine too. And then look, Joey, let's make sure we make a note um, in the 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 pad patty document when we turn it over to the contractor, so that that doesn't get missed. I do see that the um, the other planning board member has been on for this. Um, uh, so when we uh, finish up, I don't know, Kevin, if you have any additional questions, Kevin asked us, or how much you had missed of the presentation. If there's anything you want them to go over. Uh, I, I read through earlier, so uh, I'm I'm listening in, and uh, and so far I'm all good. Okay, very good. I have one more comment. Oh, I apologize for late late arrival. One more comment, Kevin. Yes, um, go ahead, Kevin. The architectural review must must have been from you. That <laughs> new plan is phenomenal. I mean, they should they should adopt that for all of their Chick Fil A's. I think that new the new architectural design is is modern and and great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, we appreciate the effort. Okay, so um, Christine, where do we go from here? What's our next step? So based on the comments received, um, then the, the few things that they have gotten from myself, uh, from planning and from DPW and what we're waiting on on the fire chief, we can I can handle this administratively if you're comfortable. I don't need, I don't think that they need to come back. I know that there's some minor modifications that need to happen to, to the plans with regard to stormwater and a few other things. But um, the other option is you could continue it until your next meeting. But I don't feel as though it's necessary at this point. And I do want to say we thank everyone um, involved for uh, working with the planning board on this. I think it's going to be a fabulous project and a fabulous addition to the town. So whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. Um, let me ask uh, the board, any, any, um, anyone concerned with letting this be voting on this and letting it be completed administratively? I have no issues with uh, letting this be completed administratively. Okay. Margaret? I'm not, I have no issues with uh, Christine doing this. Okay. Um, Christine, just a um, question. Um, are we, is Kevin okay to vote on this? So Kevin was at the, la at the last he meeting. He was, yeah. I think he's yeah. fine with, it, with this. He okay. said he's yeah. comfortable with... He missed okay. a few minutes at the start of the meeting. Um, sure. Okay. All right. Um, so I, I would just add that I, I'd prefer if um, everybody, if there's four members now, including Kevin, mm -hmm. to vote just to cover our basis. Just okay. Because oh, we're, yeah, we're we're gonna we're all gonna vote. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, well, then I'm willing to entertain any motions. I move that we approve the plan and we let Christine um, take care of all the administrative um, details that need to be finished. Second. I second. Oh, go ahead. Okay. 
So let the record show that we have a motion by Lori Ann Miller, seconded by Kevin Estes, to approve this plan as presented with administrative completion. So all in favor, Lori Ann Miller? Yes. Kevin Estes? Yes. Margaret Sweet? Yes. And Kevin Mello, yes. Okay, very Thanks good. Very much. Okay, good luck. Thank you. And what's, good what's, your, uh, what's your ETA? Just when people ask. Oh goodness, we've got to we've got to work through a few things with uh, with our friends at Pre, but we're we're going to get close. And um, uh, if we can get through the permitting process quick, then we potentially could start construction in the fall. Wonderful, January so I would first. Reach open. Out to um the ZBA sooner rather than later for your your signage um, uh, yeah. application because that yeah. takes just a little while to get on their agenda. Okay. okay, thank you for that. We'll definitely do that. Thank you, Christine. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank it's you. been a pleasure working with you all. You too. Bye thank bye. You. Have a good evening. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, hopefully there's a lot of happy Chick-fil-A um, <laughs> lovers in town tomorrow morning when they read this. Um, so on to administrative item number two, site plan review, 439 State Road. Okay, so um, Margaret has recused in the past for this one. Um, I do not think that's necessary this evening. Um, she will not be voting on this, but... Um, that we have received no updates, no finalized um, application package or anything else from this applicant. Um, so I am uh, moving that you um, take this off the agenda, agenda for the time being. I can't see con continually continuing it without some more information from them. So I would like a motion to do that. We can't vote okay. on it. You, can't, you don't have nothing to go on. So, so this is a site one? plan review based on the change of use. So this this was a site plan review, yeah. So it's for um, by change the, of um, the uh, insurance company next to Marisol's that was Correct. being proposed for a nail salon that had applied for a building. Um, they had applied for building permits and then were brought to site plan review, but they have not come back. I had had an attorney reach out a couple of times at the very very beginning. Again, the application is not complete. Um, you know, obviously the, the use that was proposed, um, it, they, there was, a, you know, it was a, a very high intensity use the way it was proposed. And we were anticipating revised plans to uh, scale back the intensity of the, of the use of the site. So I, I'm not sure how it's going to go and we can open up the application if, if, if things move in that direction in the future. Okay, so board, do I have a motion? So <clears throat> this is there, there's no deadline that. Uh, it's, so there is there is no deadline. They again they never completed the application, and we did not take the fee as part of this one, which is a very unusual case. But because of the way it had come in, um, so we're not holding any money. We're not holding anything. Um, we typically make sure that we have, you know, we, for site plan review, we do have a timeline, but again, if we don't have a complete application and they're not responding to the comments and the questions that, you know, the onus is on them, there's nothing outstanding for you to do at this point. I mean, you can, you can deny it if you want, but I don't think it's necessary in this particular case because they never completed the application. Otherwise I would maybe advise you to, you know, do it differently to close okay. it out. But if you're more comfortable, you can do that. You know, I just no, don't I, think it's necessary. I'll take your lead on that. I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't any any uh, deadline that that we were going to uh, to pass. No. Okay. So again, Margaret can't um, uh, vote on this one or give a a, um, a motion or anything like that. So it's between Kevin Estes and Lori. Lori, I will cede to uh, to my predecessor. <laughs> is she muted yeah i'm muted laura i think she yeah she's trying
No. Unmute. There we go. Am I unmuted? Okay. You are. That took a, a few minutes. Um, what type of emotion do you need just to remove it so from I the want you To have a motion to take this off of the agenda until such time as the applicant um, either completes or with, with, tries to withdraw the application. They need so to move moved. the application. Okay, so moved. Okay, I have a motion by Lori Miller. Second. Second by Kevin Estes, all in favor. Lori Miller? Yes. Kevin Estes? Yes. Kevin Mello, yes. All right. Item number three. So chapter item ninety one. So that is just a um a planning board notification. I have the form um uh for seven Cedar Avenue. Um it is on the Slocum River. We have reached out to the um the conservation commission. They have conservation and um the harbor master have already looked at this. They had no concerns with regard to this um, thing. So I would like to put together, um, you have a draft of the uh, of the letter um, that we usually send and the notification form. So uh, there, I don't see any reason why we can't do that. Um, it meets the requirements. Okay, very good. I'll need a motion and a second, please. Uh, motion to accept the application uh, for the uh, the Chapter 91 waterways license. And uh, authorize me to uh, send in the, the notification form. And authorize you to send in the notification form. Okay, so we have, a, motion, and we have a motion made by Kevin Estes. Seconded by Margaret Sweet. All in favor? Kevin Estes? Yes. Margaret Sweet? Yes. Lori Ann Miller? Um, I don't vote on that, do I? Um, this is a brand new one. You can if you want to. Um, you don't have to. Okay, yes. Okay, Kevin Mello, yes. The next one you probably will, you will not vote on because it okay. is acceptance of the minutes of April 8th, 2024. I make a motion to accept. Yeah, these motion, this thing, uh, this meeting had to do with the um, the public hearing for the uh, article for town meeting. Right. Just as a refresher. That's all that was on that agenda. Sure. So we have a motion by Margaret Sweet and the second. Second. By Kevin Estes. Margaret Sweet. Yes. Kevin Estes. Yes. Kevin Mello, yes. Correspondence, um, Ball River, Freetown, and Westport. So this is just a, a motion to acknowledge and file. Motion to acknowledge and file. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Margaret Sweet. All in favor, Kevin Estes? Yes. Margaret Sweet? Yes. Lori Ann Miller? No, I don't vote on that. Okay, you don't have to. Uh, and Kevin Mello, yes. We are information slash new business. Um, so you do have uh, one decision, which was the approval of a special permit for 38 Lakeside Avenue um, from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, that was done on April 10th. Um, to grant a special permit to construct an 18 by 20 foot sunroom on an existing single family residence. Um, That's just for your information. And that is the only one that we received there. Um, there is a ZBA meeting on Wednesday evening. I don't have anything else with regard to that. I noticed that uh, on the application that, that that's in the uh, overlay district number, the, the third zone. Um, do you know if the ZBA members take into account whether the... Uh, they do. They have to. That is one of the reasons why it had to go for special permit. And then that was included in the decision. So that's item number two um, within the uh, within the decision. So they do acknowledge that they have been informed. They're informed of that during the process um, as part of the... Uh, um, the uh, viewpoint review that all of the departments give 
So one of the things that I am tasked with doing at this point is letting them reiterating if they're in the aquifer district as well. And they do speak to the lot coverage um, on item four. Um, and they are they were seeking the relief as part of their special permit application. Okay. So we need to acknowledge and file. Is that correct? Or no, nope, nope. That's just for your information. So you can okay. just move on to subcommittee reports. Any anyone with subcommittee reports? No. Okay. Myra, anything? Um, we just had a meeting and we met again uh, with the Agricultural Commission, um, trying to go over some things. They have some suggestions for uh, planning, zoning, and it would be nice. I, I suggested that they make an appointment to come before us um, with these questions they have about zoning for farms. They have not reached out to date. They do on occasion reach out for special for special meetings. So this was for CPC, correct? Right, CPC. Yeah. Um, I, I'll I'll try to remember to uh, contact one of them. Some of it was, you know, they had a pretty good idea. So farming's tough in this town. Farming's tough in this area because of the price of land. Um. Okay, sounds like that's it for subcommittee reports. Uh, planners report. So for the planners report, we did have a um, um, a technical reviewer meeting on April 16th. We went over one proposal for a golf road for a potential small condo um, uh, condo development. It's still a long ways off. It's uh, for a property that's being marketed by um, a broker in town and basically the the group that wants to come before us is, is they have a potential buyer for the sites. They have to buy a few of the lots. They didn't realize that the lots had been, that the, the larger lot had been subdivided in such a way. So they went back, basically they're back at the drawing board right now. Um, the other thing is on May 7th is the next meeting that we have. And um, we will have the owners of 610 State, State Road, which is the upholstery shop. Um, they had put in for a, an addition on that site, um, which is within the aquifer protection zone, um, to do, uh, to, to increase the size of the, of the building in that area. So they, um, there was a note put in the, the planning, the, uh, the building portal, um, which made them, uh, apply for site plan review. So that is, is something that, um, if you want to look at it on Google Maps, things like that, or if you have any questions for me to ask in preparation for that meeting on the 7th, just let me know. Um, but that's it for technical reviewer meetings. Um, for planning department updates, I am meeting with the finance committee on Thursday, April 25th. Um, I did go over the open meetings law. Um, you're not deliberating that day. So any of you or none of you or all of you could show up. Um, uh, I'm going to present the article that we're bringing for town meeting um, and all of the items that were associated with it. Um, and then I will be meeting with the select board on April 29th. Initially, that was supposed to be tonight. We we're supposed to switch around, but then they rescheduled their meeting on Thursday. Um, so again, that one will be on April 29th. And again, it's the same thing. It's for the town meeting article and, um, anybody can attend that wants to attend with regard to that one. Um, that's all I have. Christine, I have a question. Sure. Um, we were going to decide which members are going into other boards. Are we going to wait until Nick comes? So we are going to, we are going to wait. And then okay, um, we're also, I sent the letter officially asking for a, um, a, a new member. I send a letter to the select board. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that ends up happening maybe on April 29th. From what I understand, there are two applicants that have come forward. Um, one did reach out to the planning office today. And then the other one, I guess, went to the select board. Somebody did call last week. I don't know if it's the same the same person. Um, 
So uh, we'll get additional direction from them, and I will uh, I will email you or let you know if you if you need to be in attendance or if you want to be in attendance. You can be in attendance anyway at the select board meeting in general. I am going to be there. So if they're going to do that at the same time, or if they're going to do that at their next meeting, I'll let you know. Uh, I'm a little confused. Um, okay. One, I didn't realize it had been posted publicly yet. It it should be posted publicly and put on either social media or in the print that we are looking for a member. And right. But that, the select board in the um, clerk's office take that on. It's not up to us to do that, I don't think. Well, the, the second part that's got me a little confused is that it has always been done, or, or I shouldn't say always, but... When I got on, when um, when we appointed somebody for other people, and, and Lori, if you're still there, uh, maybe you can help me. Um, it has always been a joint vote of the planning in select board, not just the select. It's not up to the select board to fill this position. Yes, yes I, it is a, it, I did find some additional information today <clears throat> that said it was a joint um, a joint meeting when you had done it. I think mm -hmm. when I don't know when Steve Taylor or Chris O'Neill had come on. It, it was know, also in my it, tenure it, on this board. It was it joint as well. So, joint. I, so I did the yeah. letter that I did send to the select board office today said to let us know so that we could, you know, be present or so as I said, I don't know when they're going to schedule it. I don't know if they've put their agenda out for next Monday yet. Um, because I, I have been telling people to, to I've been telling people to watch for that post and not to actually fill out application. There's no, okay. I, I've been telling people to watch for that because I didn't know the time frame. Okay. okay. Yeah, so I don't know. That's fine. Right. They can have more time. Um, I will ask tomorrow if the select board will be putting that out. I think it's them that has to post it. I don't think we're allowed to post the uh, right. In the past, it's been yeah. posted on Dartmouth Weekly. Um, as a posting. <laughs> so, uh, and then once we see that post, and that's when we we solicit people to to respond to that post and. Yeah, well, so people have just taken it upon themselves to show yep, interest yep. for it, you know, so people are starting to 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 send things in or to bring things on in on their own. I guess they can do that. Absolutely. Um, that, that's great. As far as a joint meeting. Um, and then I think that the. Um, the decision at our at our meeting on April 8th was that you were going to wait until the newest member comes in before you reorganize and okay uh, great I forgot I think yep. that's what we had said that's what we um, said just yep. did the top we just did the three positions that you all hold right. okay that's okay. fine I'll, I'll do I'll be there Wednesday night <laughs> fabulous Thursday night no I'll be there Wednesday for my for the meeting that Chris used to do I'll be there Sir, oh okay oh okay 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 Okay. Um, yeah. So um, on Kevin, Thursday, don't, don't we get a chance? Don't we? Don't we? Um, don't shouldn't we know who's applying also? Though we we should get copies of their application on I their think letter. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's what he's that's what he's saying. So okay. um, I have received one because somebody sent something into me directly. The other thing only went to the select board. I don't know if they'll, if once they're gathering them, I'm not quite sure, then I'll request them all okay. so that you can see them all. That's fine. Yes, yeah, prior prior to the meeting. So we can yeah. do some research. Right. right. Um, and prepare, um, prepare some questions. Right. And one thing that I would suggest is that, you know, if, if you, let's say we interview three people that you ask anyone on the board who asks a question, you ask it consistently and in the same matter for everybody. Mm -hmm. You right. don't ask different questions from different people. Right. So there were three questions last time with the last, the last time that we did that we formally gave to uh, Sean for distribution to the select board. So there were three questions that the planning board wanted to ask. So I, I will send that out to you again and we can change it, modify it, do whatever we need to do um, to that list of questions, whatever you want to do in advance. And I will send that to him as well. So that Thank everybody asks the same question. Correct. Correct. Okay. 
All right. Well, uh, Christine, is that it for your planner's report? That is it. Okay. Um, so that really, you, you covered everything on my, as my chairman report also. I was going to question Thursday night. Um, I know you've asked me to be there in the past. So um, we will be at the finance committee meeting on Thursday. Four yeah, o'clock. You can make it four o'clock. Anybody that, who can make it, that would be fabulous. I'm going to try to be there. Okay. If not, I really can handle it, but yes. <laughs> I well, know you can handle it. Yes, but if but I think it's good to come across as a united front. This is a big, this is a big zoning proposal, a big zoning bylaw okay. yeah. proposal that we're trying to do, right. and you've worked, you've all worked very hard on it, and it's come together fabulously. It's an important one too. It's a very important one, actually. Are we early on their agenda? Do you know? We are. We're right at the start of their agenda. Um, uh, the first, the first item on the agenda. If I can make it, I will, but, yep. uh, let's... yep. I, I understand working <clears throat> hours, whatever. Nope. I get it. I get it completely. Um, if not, then you'll have other opportunities. The next thing is the, like I said, the finance, mm -hmm. I mean, the select board meeting on Monday, the, um, that it can make the 29th at six 30. Um, we usually get put on early on the agenda for that one. And then of course that town meeting. You're a town meeting member, so you know that's sure. very important as well. Okay. Um, any changes to that will affect us with Sean McGinnis's leaving? Um, not that I know of. I was concerned about public uh, the town meeting, but um, he's not leaving officially until after that. Um, otherwise, we're in pretty good shape. I don't see any issues. Okay. I know of. Okay. Uh, are they going to be looking upon you to be doing any additional no. duties? Nobody has asked anything yet. I don't know. I will keep you posted if something comes up, if there's something. Okay. Okay. Um, and if they do with Ross in place, we are in a good spot, correct? We're in a very good spot. Yes, we are. Yes. Okay. All right. Very good. So item number seven. Laura, you can vote on this one if you want to, but you don't have to. <laughs> okay. Or we can stay all night. Right. Nobody's in a hurry. Motion yeah. to adjourn. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. We have a motion by Kevin Estes. Second. Second by Margaret Sweet. All in favor? Kevin Estes? Yes. Margaret Sweet? Yes. Lori Miller? Yes. Thank you Kevin very much. Mello? Yes. Thank you, Lori, for being here. You're welcome. Thank <laughs> you. Yes. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Lori.